Hi guys, I'm the Impaired Grappler. Welcome to my podcast. Today we have a special guest, one of Australia's uh, top endurance athletes. Um, it's John Van Wisser, who is um, uh, known for his marathon swimming, endurance, long distance swimming, uh, swimming the English Channel and the likes of that, Manhattan swim winner multiple times. So yeah, like, he's got many accolades, so check out his bio uh, on his website and all that. Um, links will be below. Uh, yeah, we touched on many things like his love of coffee, um, how he travels, breathing, um, breathing concepts and flow state, uh, his love of the cold over the heat, um, his issues during uh, some races and how he deals with sort of the dark thoughts and, you know, not quitting kind of thing, um, experimenting with new techniques, uh, also his encounters with nature. Uh, injuries he's had and sort of diet you know having to gain weight to be able to swim the channel with no wetsuit so we covered a lot i hope you guys enjoy be sure to follow him uh check out his school uh where he teaches swimming down down uh near brighton and yeah follow me on my social media like subscribe and share and we'll catch you later oh, sorry. <laughs> well, it's a muggy day. Mm-hmm. It's a muggy day. Yep. It's alright. I don't care. <laughs> all right, guys. All right. Hi, guys. I'm the Impaired Grappler, and welcome to my podcast. Uh, today, we've got a very special guest, uh, an old friend of mine and mentor from and coach from the old triathlon days. Um, he's one of Australia's best athletes that goes under the radar, uh, especially within the endurance community. Um, a couple of his achievements, a 2014 Arch to Arc, mm. world records, mm. uh, smashed the time in 12 hours, um, and that's a long distance, 140k run, 33k yeah. swim, and uh, 291 two, two, two <laughs> yeah. ride, so you ride yeah. to the yeah, Arch so in France. Yeah, in Paris, st- yeah, starting the Marble Arch of London, yeah, run yeah. to the channel. <laughs> Swim the channel and cycle to Paris. Ah, yeah, that's amazing. So, yeah, also done 2010, you did a double channel double crossing. Channel. Yeah, double channel. So, you went from England to France? Yeah, forgot my towel and came but back. Your towel came back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You, did, you didn't like the, fr- the Did not like the French towel. Yeah, like okay. <laughs> 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 so, fair enough. So, like, yeah, multiple time, first out of the swim in mm. uh, Hawaii Ironman. What? Yeah. A whole lot of accolades, mm. which I, I, I could never mention. <laughs> I, I would take half an hour just going through them all. So, um, motivational speaker, coffee lover, and Aussie legend, John <laughs> Van Wieser. Uh, thanks, right? <laughs> anyway, welcome hey, to right. the podcast. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So I just wanted to, just in general, like um, the local cafes, would they go out of business <laughs> if you were to uh, quit caffeine for a time Well, we just being? went to out to my yeah, wife. It was pretty yeah, good, eh? We <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. We used to do the chocolate there too. Yeah, we used to deliver chocolates mm. to that shop. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Great uh, cafe. Oh, yeah, this area's got a lot yeah. of good ones. But Melbourne in general's got oh, probably great. the best coffee in the yeah. world. You're all the same, yeah. though, when you You're train hard, yeah. you know, co- coffee, kick yeah. back. Yeah, good, good, good feed. Good stimulants, good feed. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I reckon if you gave up caffeine, the, <laughs> the local... Uh, Cafe, the industry would drop. Like right? would drop like, you know, people would be protesting your, outside your house. Thanks, Seb. <laughs> Come back, support us. <laughs> but yeah, so anyway. So like, just like, you do a lot of travelling. Yeah. And like when you're in another country, uh, how do you go about embracing or learning about the other cultures or the people within that country? Mm. Or do you just ignore them? Or <laughs> no, I'm, not, stick to yourself? I'm not very cultural. <laughs> <laughs> I tend to go there and do the event and come back. And yeah. it's because of work too, so I tend mm. to um, yeah not not stay long. Unfortunately, I'd love to have, have longer time. But yeah, but you do get you do like have a good party after. Oh that. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. we had a good time after uh, the arch. We went yeah. to, went to um, France. Went to Normandy. Yeah. And that was fantastic. It put in life into perspective yeah. when you see what people went through, you know, in the oh, war, World War Two, yeah. how tough they were and yeah, how true. weak we are and soft we are these yeah. days compared to those. I know. And point. do not walk here, you might blow up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, shit, oh, you see the holes, yeah. they've still got the, the holes at the yeah. um, when they were bombing the beach, like, holy, you wouldn't be standing yeah. there. <laughs> oh, it's, yeah, it's cool. They still find bombs in cellars <laughs> that oh. haven't been blown up. Well, yeah. apparently, like, um, some of the houses, they... Uh, when they're doing the garden, they still find yeah, bones yeah, and then yeah. they have to get the excavators yeah. out and do another grave. And oh, it's just crazy. unbelievable. <laughs> but yeah, no, yeah. so so I tend to just do the event and mm. only have a few days and yeah. then head back because of work. So. Yeah, well, like, so. it's part of being a professional, right? Like yeah, a professional semi professional. I always say professional. Well, yeah, more like a glorified yeah. hobby for me. It's like, <laughs> I wish well, I was professional. But, well, uh, yeah. Not well, much money in it, it's just, uh, just a glorified yeah. hobby. And 
Well, is, is there anywhere you've been where you've like sort of felt unwelcome or unsafe? Mm. Or? Oh, whew. not really. No, everything's been good. Swam around Manhattan a few times. Mm. And, um, well, that, that, water, was, that water's horrible. Isn't oh, it? yeah. I heard stories. It was really bad. And you have all your shots. Yeah. But they've cleaned it up a fair bit. Okay. But, but um, that's pretty. That's pretty surreal because you. Yeah. You're swimming under like the George Washington Bridge where Tarzan jumped off supposedly. <laughs> you know, like you pass the um, the Yankee Stadium where the baseball is, and you go through Harlem. So you got little people there fishing, going, mm. "What the hell is this dude swimming for? You know, what's going on?" They think they're rubbing their eyes. Oh, yeah. um, you go past all the uh, the famous um, buildings, and yeah, but that's that's pretty. Um, you feel like you don't belong out there. It's pretty pretty surreal yeah but that's a that's a great event seeing all the swimming past all these cultural icons <laughs> yeah yeah it's fantastic <laughs> fortunately i breathed to my right most of the time my left because it's an anti-clockwise swim so i had to swap breathing sides a few times and but uh but yeah that's that's yeah. that's an incredible okay. incredible event well, well with the breathing mm. like obviously like with swimming it's probably the only time where you use a mouth to breathe from yeah early. yeah um whereas every other sport they say breathe through your nose really out your mouth yeah, yeah so things like that yeah um so, like, have you heard of Wim Hof and his breathing yeah, techniques? Yeah, and, like, yeah. I've have heard you, of like, him. tried any of nah, his stuff? Yeah. No, nah, I heard about him, though, yeah, because he was in Australia recently. Yeah. My friends went and saw him, yeah. holds his breath for so long. Oh, yeah, he's got all his world records and that. Yeah, I reckon yeah. that'll be good for you, especially. <laughs> or, like, you do well in the cold, but, like. Mm, oh, I love the cold. The cold. Yeah. Like, but, like, you've had trouble with the heat in the past. Yeah, I don't like the heat. Did you, like, like, did you finish, uh, did you compete mm. in the full Hawaii Ironman? Or yeah, I finished, but I never, never had a good race there. Yeah. I only ever spent a week there because of yeah. work, so I needed to spend a month there. Okay, I so couldn't afford to do it, and um, so yes, yeah, so I never really had the race I wanted to. I won the swim, but even the swim, I didn't swim very well because even the waters, like you're swimming in a spa, you just want to go to sleep. Yeah. You're swimming along, and you think, oh, I should be racing, or just feel like. <laughs> uh, <laughs> should be lying on the beach, not racing. So, do you ever get into a flow state? Like, oh yeah, like, you have your moments. Yeah. Um, it's like I always say, endurance sports are like a metaphor of life, just all compacted into one. Mm. Like you don't know what's around the corner, you can have a high spot, and then a minute later you're having a massive flat spot. And you think, where'd this come from? And you deal with it, and move on. So it's just a, an emotional roller coaster, but you don't know what's around the corner. You just mm. got to hopefully absorb it and um, not not let it stop you and keep moving forward. So yeah, yeah, I think it's yeah, it's a, just a metaphor of life amplified into one one intense event. Yeah, and like so, obviously, well, while you're swimming, mm. like you're obviously in your own head. Mm. And um, is there any times where, ha how do you find order in times of chaos, like in the darkness and mm. like you might have dark thoughts or, or you want to give up yeah. know, halfway across the channel, oh, I, I quit, or, you know, like how do you, um, is there any concepts of bringing order in those oh, times of chaos? I've had some tough, tough moments mm. and yeah, you do have those thoughts and you just got to like not get ahead of yourself. I, I always think with um, endurance sport, like it's if you're thinking I've got 60 hours to go, it's a real mental, you know, like yeah. like the Arch yeah. Arc, you've got 140k yeah. run. If you're already thinking, geez, I've got to swim the channel in yeah. 15 hours, it's not good. Yeah. <laughs> so you try to sustain the moment and not get ahead of yourself mm. and just yeah, keep in the zone, whatever that means. The zone. <laughs> yeah, but but um, but last time I did the Arch to Arc, I, we had a very tough swim. Mm. Like we were on a massive tide, eight and a half metre tide, and we were back for hurricanes. So. The swim was really um, an awkward chop. I was mm. getting all thrown around. And that was the one this year? Oh, no, that was 2014. 2014, okay. Yeah, so, yeah, so like... that was um, a very tough swim, and swim was normally mm. my strength. Yeah. And it was just an awkward chop, so your arm would be there, your head was here, your leg was there, just getting, I was just getting ragdolled. Mm. And I was about two hours into the swim, and I was feeling sorry for myself. I said to the boatman, I said, oh, is this going to get me better? And I was expecting a bit of love, mm. and he's like, I thought you were a swimmer. Swim. So I thought, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> yeah, well. So I kept going and got through that bad period, and you know had a good period again, and had a tough period again at the end where um, mm. 400 metres ago I was against the tide. Mm. So the last 400 metres took me half an hour. Jesus Christ! And I was thinking, even with 10 metres ago, I'm thinking I might not be able to get in. I'm sprinting as hard as I can. I'm just hoping to touch a rock. Yeah, you know, you just pull hope. yourself along. Yeah, yeah, and I was, I was um, exhausted. Like how deep is it there? It's still oh, pretty we, deep. You can't go to the bottom and pull yourself along. It depends where you end. land. So we, we mm. finished at night, and I was um, heading for these rocks where the lighthouse was, so yeah. I could just see the lighthouse. Yeah. And because um, you just have to be fully out of water, so it doesn't matter where you land. Okay. So you're at the mercy of the tide. You're getting swept around, and it was an eight and a half meter tide. We went on a big tide because um, you you book it um, in advance. Yeah. 
that was the only tide free a year out, so we had a tough tide. Yeah, so that race you can do it in sections. So you, you, uh, know, right? you book your window in, it's like a time yeah. trial. So <laughs> yeah. you book a window and you get a week's uh, window, and you really um, you go by you, you're calling to the English Channel boatman, yeah. and when the weather's the best, you then backlog X amount of hours and you run into that tide. And so everyone starts the race at their own time. Oh no, so it's a or solo. So. I think it's a time trial. Yeah, yeah, solo yeah. Time, time so, trial style. Yeah. And then you have to so get you're there. not like sprinting to the finish. No, against everyone else. no. Just, yeah. And you have to leave at the high tide. Yeah. So so um, if he, if the boatman says Tuesday midnight is going to be a good tide, that's the start of the high tide, you've got to backlog X amount mm. of hours and you have to run into that tide. So if you get there before then, you can't go. If you get there yeah. after that, you, you're stuffed. Yeah. So, then, so but the clock doesn't stop. So if you get there early, the clock's still going. If you get there, if you miss the tide, you're gone. You've got to wait to the next tide. Yeah. So what happened with this year's event? You, you pulled out injured? Yeah. Was that a calf? Or oh, no. It? No, it's... Um, so this year, um, I tried to, last time I did the run in 15.52 and I left off 24 hours. That was mm. what I, the backlog I gave myself for the high tide. Yeah. This time I tried it off a 20 hour turnaround and um, basically got off the plane and um, three days later I was running because uh, it was the start of the window. The rest of the week was looking terrible. Mm. So uh, we did the run, it ended up being 31 degrees, 90% humidity. And, I had a bad run. Plus you were still a bit jet lagged. A bit jet well. lagged. I was hoping to go the next week, but mm. um, for three weeks no one swam the channel, so they got the yeah. weather right. It was tough, bad winds, but mm. they end up getting the. It was super hot that day. It was the hottest banking holiday they've ever mm. had in a hundred years. <laughs> so, and I'm hopeless in the heat. There so seems got to be through, a lot of those days. Oh, the hottest something. I mean, one percent yeah. finish it, so it's not. It's a tough event. And so I got through the run, um, and I got through the run in 17 hours and nine minutes, which is behind schedule. But I was trying to do off a 20 hour turnaround, so I had a couple of hours to rest before I had to start the channel. Yeah. But uh, I had a hot bath, and I shouldn't have done it, I should have had a cold bath. And yeah. I had a few bad moments after that. And uh, we tried to put it back to the next high tide, which is mm. 12 hours later, but bearing in mind the clock's still going. And the, um, and the organiser said, Yeah, you can do that, but you've got to pass a medical. Mm. Um, and everything was closed, so we had to find a dock that was open. So we had to drive into London, it cost me 200 Public pounds, holiday, and a doctor yeah. failed me, so I wasn't yeah. allowed to start the swim. <laughs> So, <laughs> that's right. Because yeah. someone died like three weeks yeah. before attempting it, and someone died the year before, so they're getting a bit funny now. So. Yeah. Oh well, it's not like it's an easy thing. Like your first, your first one was in what ninety three. Not oh uh, the channel. The first yeah. channel swim. Yeah. Uh, sorry, not uh, yeah. The first channel swim. Mm. Um, and was it Dr. Dor Fraser pulled you out of that yeah. one? You had a hypothermia. You didn't have enough fat. Yeah. Was it? So what happened with that? Was it more just the ego? You wanted to have your abs, <laughs> like you said yeah. before, or? Yeah. So '93 uh, was my first English Channel attempt yeah. at not Arch Dark. Yeah. Yeah. And um, with the Channel, yeah, it's um, obviously the cold's a big, a big thing. So you got to put on a bit of bit of body fat. Mm. With the Arch Dark, you're allowed to wear a wetsuit, so you don't have yeah, to be okay. as big. Yeah. So you can work out what weight you got to be. Mm. But for the Channel, you got to carry a bit of fat, so it's not it's good. Carry, yeah. And I, you know, I was pretty proud of my body back then. I had a six pack, and mm. I thought I'd be the skinniest person to ever go across the channel. Yeah. And um, I was going really well for three quarters, and then just got hypothermia and passed out. And uh, it's funny. It's like you think you can beat it, but it's like when you're trying to watch mm. telly at night or reading a book late at night, mm. and you just fall asleep. You can't yeah. help it. So I just gradually it's crept up on me, and I ended up passing out in the water. And yeah. The crew pulled me in and apparently Dawn resuscitated right. me and I woke up in Dawn's arms with one of those mm. space blankets around me and um, so yeah, so she saved my life. So I was pretty rattled mm. and uh, I didn't want to go back and um, Dawn talked me into going yeah. back and the next year I put on 23 kilos of body mm. fat and I got across, got the um, the Australian record yeah. for the fastest crossing the okay. next year and I did it quite comfortably because mm. But well, I look terrible, but yeah. I'm... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's, that's that's what. So, like, t tell us, like, how did you gain that weight? Like, what kind of? It's pretty hard. Yeah. yeah. So I was I was eating till I was uncomfortable. Um, Were you just eating more a lot of junk food junk as well? Food, junk food um, and protein and yeah, I'd go to Macca's fats. and have like five Big Macs, mm, and okay. so you're eating till you're uncomfortable. Yeah. And yeah. then I eat late at night, like a pizza mm. at night. Okay. So. It's, it sounds good. It's good for a week, but then you're getting like mm. a, lot, a lot of heartburn, and mm. it's not. And then you see yourself, and you know you go to put your shoes on. You're like, <gasps> yeah. you got all the fat around your stomach, mm. squashing your organs, yeah. and yeah. Um, and then you know your, your friends you need, you need say, that protection if you're going to do yeah, swims. But it's like being a seal. You got to mm. have that that uh, layer of fat, the blubber, to protect you against the cold. And, yeah. So yeah. they, used to, they used to put the, lub, the lard on. Yeah, <laughs> they used to do that, but that, that's more of a, just a yeah. token gesture. Doesn't yeah. do. <laughs> doesn't do much so okay. so yeah they actually don't recommend you don't put too much on now because yeah. it clogs your pores yeah so now they just say put it on where you chafe and 
Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, so, so it's it's yeah, it's not a sport for uh, for vanity. <laughs> no, no. Well, like, uh, is there any times you've had a like an uh, epiphany in your coaching or learning, like where finally you've heard the same lesson a million times? Yeah. And then, and then all of a sudden, just clicks, and then all this information comes together, and it's like, oh wow, I understand that concept now, um, and like can translate to other fields maybe. Mm. Or, is there any time where you've had an uh, epiphany mm. like that in your... I don't know about that. I'm always experimenting with um, technique when you swim. and mm. I like to study other swimmers and try it out myself. And, yeah. Um, so, so, yeah, I have about 10 different swimming styles I've tried and experimented yeah. with. And um, my running style for, for the 140K, I experimented with, with that too. So I did a yeah. lot of research. And um, um, there's a guy called Nick, Dean Canassis who wins all the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100 kilometer trail yeah. runs and he basically apparently according to the youtube sets up his office where he walks around uh has no chairs mm. and walks around bare feet to strengthen his feet feet mm, muscles yeah. and he's a minimalist oh, so he foot, wears yeah. yeah so he wears like um the nike free which the minimalist yeah. run well that's why yeah i've got the merrells with the i think it's a six mil yeah one. like you can you can twist it twist this up and put it in your pocket oh yeah you know, like that's <laughs> that, that's when it's a sort of decent shoe run yeah yeah you know? Putting a cast around your foot yeah. is what they, you know, that's when you put a hiking boot on, basketball shoe or a runner, it's mm. just all, there's no way you can fold it because it's that much. It's much, much padding. shoe. Yeah, it's that much yeah. shoe where you, so you're not actually feeling the ground. Whereas these, you get a little bit more feel of the ground. Yeah. Um, probably not good for too big hiking, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I love the minimalist sort of, mm. you know, try to walk around barefoot as much as possible. Yeah. Just build those strength in the feet. Okay. So um, I just want to ask, what's mm. the scariest encounter with nature you've had? Oh, well, um, mm, the Loch, my sister swam the Loch Ness, and um, I was a <laughs> guinea pig at the time. At the time, I was training for Hawaii, so so I was I was uh, I came over with her, and um, I was always a guinea pig. So mm. the training sessions, I'd have to go in first because she was yeah. scared of the monster. Yeah. So N Nessie rocked the boat, or so, <laughs> no? You actually believe it's there, so yeah. I jumped in and it's it's like 400 meters deep mm. and it's only a mile wide so it's just in the middle of the highland so just yeah it's I've, 38 I've been there it's just oh, it's, it's amazing. Da dark and it's just like black so the yeah. soot, soot from the soot. runoff yeah. of the mountains just like and it's just like you can't see that mm. far in front of you yeah so, so I, I dived like in, and, in, and, you, in there. and your body's like illuminated like a light globe okay but it's there's no buoyancy it's dead water mm. here, so I'm like go just wait for my sister to jump in you yeah, can okay. barely like float oh, okay and um, there's like all these air bubbles because apparently there's caves underneath. So all okay, the bubbles, yeah, yeah. all the bubbles come well, up. Well, that's what they say about Nancy. Yeah, and She's actually, um, the caves. and the, the day before we went to a pub and we had all our sponsors top on, mm. and um, and the, there was a Scotsman at the bar going, what, what are you guys wearing? And we told him, you know, my sister's doing the Loch Ness, and he was being sarcastic, going, you know, watch out for the monster, ha, ha, ha. Mm. And a fisherman was next to him and he said, I've been fishing <coughs> for 20 years, you don't know what I've seen. So I'm thinking, oh, <laughs> and the next day I had to jump in. Mm. So you actually believe it because it's mm. that dark and um, eerie. Yeah, well, uh, the, the locals want to want us to believe when we go there as well. Like the, 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 bus, the bus driver <laughs> when I went was like, oh, I never used to believe it. Now I believe. Yeah. yeah it's like so. And it, she also swam um, Bondi, 40K up and down. Yeah. And uh, the day before they had a big shark sighting. Okay. So yeah. we started at four in the morning and we just had Dawn and a rubber ducky and a light and a torch. So I had to jump in and I ended up swimming on the deep end. And I ended up doing the whole thing with her. Yeah. <laughs> she was worried about the shark. Okay. So that was, but we never saw the shark. We just saw one shark once when um, yeah. we did the Cook Strait between New Zealand Islands. So yeah. um, you swim over and uh, okay. we jumped in the boat and we were heading back and uh, there was a, a blue shark as big as a boat right next to the boat. And um, the, the, the boatman said, oh, come have a look at this. And it, was, it wasn't even scared of the boat. They don't eat humans, but she's had you swim into it. It was Ooh. ginormous. Oh, well, what about the most maj any majestic moments oh. <laughs> in nature have you seen? Oh, just dolphins when you yeah. see them occasionally, uh, which is amazing. Initially, you think, oh, I hope it's not a shark. But, but yeah. Um, yeah, they're amazing creatures. Yeah, fair enough. Um, what else have I seen? See some big stingrays. They're beautiful. Yeah. Oh, magnificent. Mm. A lot in the bay. Yeah. Um, the, the, the ones about this big, they swim away when you swim over, yeah. but the ones that are like... You occasionally see yeah, one that's that, like this that big, massive one the, and they, they look at you and they say, oh, they look at you like oh, I can take you. Yeah. So they don't move. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just swim over them. Yeah. But yeah, they're beautiful looking uh, creatures too. The big stingrays. Fair enough. So like with growing up with your sister, you mentioned like you mm. both swam a lot. Mm. Was it more that you? It's the genetics, or is it that you were 
right place, right time mm. for both of you to have success with your with endurance swimming. So yeah, I'm not sure. Both. Yeah, our parents got us into it, and uh, my dad was a real hardworking man. He was a printer, and he funded a lot of things, and he you know just wanted us to have a good life. And um, my sister's five years older, so she she did she travelled around Europe racing, and I wanted to get out of school. Yeah. So I had to give my dad a good reason to get out of school. Yeah. <laughs> So I said, I want to become a marathon swimmer. Okay. But I didn't realise you had to swim 100 plus K a week. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> so, yeah, so I did so, that. So it's so like you saw, you saw your sibling have success. And yeah, you found you got a good life. You found I didn't realise how hard you had to train. Yeah. And then you get competitive, you know, you're yeah. starting off. Oh, I train a bit harder. I can beat, win this race. Yeah. And so, um, so it started from there. And I got sick of doing the 100 plus K swimming a week. So then I moved to marathon running. Mm. And I got sick of that. And because I'm a swim coach, I coach a lot yeah. of triathletes. So... They got me on the bike, so I started doing Ironmans, yeah. and then I got sick of the Ironman, so I went back to um, to Manhattan races, yeah. racing around Manhattan. And you used year. to like compete against college students there, teams of students. Yeah, they had they relay against, teams. Yeah, yeah, yeah they used and to still beat them. Oh, one year I had one a good year. year. I yeah. beat all the relay yeah, teams. That's, and, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's I amazing. I had a very good year. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then and then the R Shark came up, yeah. so then I did the R Shark in 2014. Yeah. Um, had a boxing match in between there, okay. so I've done different stuff. Boxing just match. different um, challenges. And so, what was the boxing match like? Uh, oh, it was nerve wracking. Yeah. <laughs> I was the last fight, yeah, so okay. so um, when you're downstairs, it's like gladiators. You, you know, it's like mm. you, you're in the cold, about to go to the cauldron. You, uh, you see the ones that have just fought that are all bloodied. Yeah. And you're thinking, oh god, hope that's not me. So, so how, how'd you do? <laughs> oh, good, I yeah. had one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man, I love to see uh, that. Uh, yeah, so. so, like, just when I get into like just quickly, like what injuries you've had mm. and like any prevention strategy like what mm. you've done in the past to fix injuries and also um what you do different today mm. and if you would do anything differently to fix any previous injuries that you yeah had, like with what you've learned and that yeah well i think I, like i said i've got smarter so mm. like i was saying before with the barefoot stuff so mm. i started doing a lot of barefoot running to strengthen my feet muscles and but you uh, need to go slowly building up on that, oh you, you do yeah. and i end up um doing like 140k yeah. in the racing flat because okay. i made my feet yeah. muscles strong mm. and so I experimented with that because I used to, I tried all the big heavy runners yeah. and I found at 50k my feet would ache no matter yeah. what I wore. So yeah. so I did a lot of barefoot training and I ended up um, being able to wear a racing flat for for long for you know for long long distance running. So that was a good thing I learnt. Um, what I've had a knee surgery that was from playing tennis. So it wasn't mm. from a. <laughs> um, what I had broke my arm fall off my bike once. Mm. Um, a hernia surgery. What else have I had? That's about it. Really. I've had a pretty good run. Shoulder surgery. But no, I've, uh, I've had a good, good run with injuries. But yeah, you, you learn as you go, and mm. my body's changing. And I'm not the same as I was 20 well, yeah. years ago. So you get smarter as you get, get older. Smarter, <laughs> and I realise I can't do the same yeah. things. But my endurance is better. Mm. I'm physically stronger. My endurance yeah. is better. But obviously, I don't have the same top end speed. Yeah. You don't recover as quick. So, so, so you start doing things like barefoot running and more mm. gym work and just uh, roll with the punches. And yeah, yeah, like I said, it's a, it's a, you've got to reinvent yourself all the mm. time. So. Yeah, as your body changes. Fair enough. So, like, can you tell us what, like, the the week of, like, leading up to the event? What? So, what did you eat? What was your oh. diet like the week of, leading to up to an event? Yeah. And like, what do you have during during the event? Mm. And what's your favourite post race meal? Because oh. <laughs> <laughs> like that's the probably the best meal ever. Yeah. After a, yeah, I know. After a long event. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, when I did the arch arc in two thousand fourteen. Um, I was just eating anything. Like I'd mm. come home and open bags of lollies yeah. and whatever I craved, yeah. I'd eat. Yeah. And um, and during the actual event, it's funny because the guy who organises the event, he says a lot of triathletes that attempt the event, you know, going with this diet program and eighty k in the run, they just say, get me some fish and chips. Yeah. Um, and that's what ended up happening to me. I ended up having McDonald's three or mm. four times. You know, I got the crew would go ahead and get me yeah. some McDonald's and come back and I'd be eating that. So, um, but then the uh, when I tried it uh, this year, I was on a high protein, low carb, low fat mm. diet. So, I got to try, try and become fat adaptive. Yeah, I found that was very good with my long distance um, mm. running. I wasn't getting hungry when I finished. Did, but, did you uh, find a, an impact on your swimming with that? Did you feel uh, any different? I felt good um, both times. So, but I definitely wasn't as as hungry when I was doing my long long distance, like mm. I was doing seventy k training runs every third week. Mm. And I'd come home and I wouldn't be starving. I'd go go to the cafe with my mates and then I'd have to work in the afternoon. So I still had a you know a big day. Mm. Um, yeah, so I found that was that was good. But like I said, I didn't get to the 
didn't get to finish the event, so it wasn't okay. a diet's fault, just uh, circumstance right. with the heat. So just one final question, like what about coffee? Do you use that to aid your training? Is that like your supplement routine? Or? Oh, that keeps me alive because yeah. I'm a swim coach, I have funny hours. So, yeah. so I'm up at four and I do a block in the morning yeah. and then I get the day free. So that's when I do my training and then I'm back again at night. So mm. I can't go to the swim pool and be half asleep. Yeah. My swimmers can, but I've got to be, so, you know, the motivator. Yeah. yeah. So I tend to have a couple of coffees in the morning. Is that where you get your energy from? Because from like, coffee, you're yeah. one of the most energetic people I know. <laughs> oh, so. no. People see me during the day and I'm totally different to in the morning because I've had two coffees. You're and, a bit like Kramer in uh, that episode when he sued the coffee company and he was like drinking all those coffees. Oh, really? <laughs> I've seen yeah, that before. Well, not quite that bad, but yeah. like, you have a lot of energy. And, yeah. yeah. Oh, thanks, anyway. so. <laughs> that's, that's a good thing. It's like, I don't know. Yeah, it's. it's mm. Like actually, people feed off feed off that, like with mm. your coaching and everything. Mm. But, oh, I love my job too. Yeah. So, oh. you know, it's a great I could job. Tell you and, yeah, passionate about it. And, you know, people want to see you. They're, they're they're happy. It's not not mm. like they don't want to see you when you're there. So, yeah, see the best of people. Well, and, like, and, and you see people that can't mm. swim 25 meters mm. still completing an Ironman. Oh yeah. And how many times you hear? Mm. I could never do a triathlon. I couldn't yeah. swim. It's like. I've heard that a million times oh, and then seen people do time. Iron Man. I've had like so. 20 people yeah. across English Channel, yeah. so yeah, I've had so things okay. like that. And some of the people who have swum the channel were non swimmers to start with. But the hardest so, thing is showing up yeah, regularly, and that's, yeah. that's all that matters. And, mm. All right. Anyway, we'll leave it there. You've oh, got to get to your class. Yeah. And, yeah. So thanks for the, oh, thanks, Sarah. Thanks thanks for the podcast thanks, interview. Hey. And, um, yeah, we'll catch up soon. And, no yeah. All right. Hey. Thanks, everyone. And we'll see you guys next time. Awesome. Let's hope that has worked. <laughs> wow. Okay. What a what a fun podcast. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, yeah, I had a really good time uh, catching up with John over coffee and then doing the podcast. So yeah. So hopefully we'll see him again on the podcast soon as a special guest. Um, yes, but I want to get more into his boxing career and uh, all that sort of stuff as well. It's pretty interesting. Um, yeah. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, be sure to follow, like, subscribe and share. Uh, check out the website and the blog and all that. Uh, links in the description below. And also check out John's uh, social media and all that sort of stuff. So hope you guys enjoy and we'll catch you next time. Peace.